This is Trev. Welcome to my blog. Like a glove. So if you hadn't already guessed, that was a bit of a parody of uh, Urchfab YouTube channel. But more about that later on. Let's get back to this video. We don't want the intro police paying me any more attention. Uh, so what we got coming up? Well, this is a little bit more of an advanced video than I should have been putting on. I should really be putting on uh, more basic stuff, but I haven't got any stuff shot and I really want to get some activity going again on YouTube after not producing any new content for six months, which has been duly noted. Sorry guys. So yeah, this video, old school gas welding project on a mudguard on an old vintage Lancia. So it'll be really interesting. Um, it was shot at work. Um, which means that I can't produce it in the same way I would be producing stuff at home where I can give you a running commentary and present it a little bit better. When I'm at work, I've got to be cracking on. So basically, it's just the camera, press record, pointed in my fart in your general direction. So here we have a right hand rear wing rear mudguard of a I would have said the 1920s to 1930s Lancia. As you can see some rust poking out there. It's obviously rusted out because of the wing bracket being a brilliant water trap. ground some of the historic repairs off and the rust and filler to reveal the extent of the damage quite fortunate because it hasn't gone past where I'm just pointing with my thumb which means that we can retain the original wing edge just see some historic repairs there where it's been welded up before and it's distorted the panel and I'd like to put it back better than it is here so we can tie up the repair and also improve upon the shape of the wing. Just assessing the shape of the wing here. Because the profile of the wing changes as it drops down towards where the lamp would be fitted, it's more curved there, lower down where that lamp's fitted, and it's flatter at the top. Because I was removing such a large section from the wing, I've made a brace up. Um, I've made the brace up thoughtfully um, so that I can work around the brace. I'm just tacking it to the wing now. With the brace welded, I've also bolted the wing bracket to it as well, so that I can relocate it back in exactly the same place. So I'm just showing you some marks there where I intend to take the repair section out to so that I can also repair that hole that's split as well. Just working out the distance from the end of the bracket to the lamp hole so I've got another reference. I'm just showing you the profile of the inside of the wing because it's far from straight, it's got to have this curved section.
So I've got some steel roughly cut out to approximately the right shape. Always make sure that your repair section is slightly larger. That's rule number one that is. Always make sure it's slightly larger. So I'm putting some curvature in the panel now by hand. I'm just giving the panel some memory at the moment. Obviously it needs a lot more shaping than just this, but this just sets the overall shape. Whatever, whatever their basic overall shape is of a panel, you really want to put that in first before you do any other shaping. Just marking underneath so I can work out where to put the wing lip, the inner wing lip. Now going back to what I was saying earlier, I want to make it a nicer shape than it was. Because I've realised that it's been welded up in the past and it's got like a, a nasty little piece right in the centre where the wing, wing bracket sits that doesn't sit flush against the original body just where I'm pointing there so what I've done is I've just smoothed that out So with a bead roll here, I'm wheeling in. My lip. What I'm using here is I'm using a, a curved roller against a flat roller. And that gives you um, like a double like a double fold, but the second fold is more radius than the first. Uh, this is a neat little trick you can use. So I'm now tapping it up. Now the second line, like I say, that was a curved die, so that second line is easily straightened out. This is a real neat trick this is. If you haven't got a rollover bead, this is something that you can utilise on a cheap bead roller, just using a curved bead set against a straight one.
So there you can see the lip formed over nicely. And that curved section has been completely taken out. Just trial fitting it now to see what I need to do next to make it fit a little bit better. Because I've rolled a curve into the panel and then bent it at a 90 degree angle, it's actually sent the panel out slightly so it needs some um, shrinking along this edge just to bring it back round again. I'm just going to trim off the overhang here so that it runs true with the edge of the wing. Now the edge of the wing is rolled over and the repair panel comes very close to this rolled over section. So what I need to do is I need to roll over the edge of the repair section that I've got there I can't just simply put a curve in it because if I did that then the panel would stick out each end so what I first need to do is I need to shrink the very edge of that repair section So now that I've shrunk that down, the next thing I need to do is to wheel it out to give it some curvature. So I've shrunk it down, which means that it won't stick out at the edges, or is less prone to doing that, and then I then wheel some curvature into the end, so that it's going to line up the curvature on the wing. So it fits much flatter now. It all needs a bit more work, so what you really want to get to the stage of is you want to use that original panel as a butt so that the repair section that you're making sits flat against the old panel. It's not stood up proud on one corner because if it doesn't fit or lie flat against the existing panel then when you come to weld it in it's going to uh, fit badly and you want it to be exactly the same shape as the original panel. So I'm just trimming the corners off put a nice radius on the corners so that when I weld it round the heat isn't all going to go right into a corner causing a high spot on the welded area. More trial fit, more manipulation needed.
So what I'm doing is I'm sanding off the old pen lines here. I'll sand those off, get rid of them completely, and then I can put the repair section back over and remark it back out again so I can then cut out the old panel work and uh, make sure that my new replacement section fits perfectly. Just cutting it out with an air hacksaw. Not cutting right up to the line, so just a rough cut this really, just to get the bulk of the panel out. And you can see that old repair sections came out with the, with the old bracket still attached to it. So initially I belt sand out up to the line Once I'm happy with that, then I sort of make any final adjustments to try and get that panel to fit like a glove. I just use a body file to fine tune. Need this panel fit in absolutely as flush as possible with no gaps anywhere almost like it's an airtight fit there so gas welding so I'm setting my flame what you normally do is turn the acetylene on um, a good basis to start from is turn the acetylene up until you can see the end of the flame with just the acetylene on only they call it you get some feathers on the end you can see it flickering on the end that's a good starting point to setting up a decent flame and then when you introduce oxygen into it it gets bluer and um, there's two cones there's an outer cone and an inner cone and you'll be able to see the outer cone shrinking down as I turn the oxygen up so as the oxygen comes up the inner cone comes down and it, it the outer cone comes down and meets the inner cone as you could just see there so it's coming down and meeting that cone on the inside, the lighter blue cone. And as soon as it just gets to that lighter blue cone, that's what's called a neutral flame. Roads, where we're going, we don't need roads. I just mentioned I'm using a, I think it was a number two nozzle. And what I'm doing is I'm just tacking it in so, I've got my repair plate all clamped into position. You'll see people do this in many different ways, but this is how I do it when I've got a when I've got to put a repair section in. I've normally got to repair it at long, along at least three sides, so I clamp it bang in the right place. I don't do this business of um, uh, where you tack it in one corner and then uh, planish that one corner out to allow the plate to spin round because I want it fitting dead in the right place. I'd rather a few tacks popped on me while I was trying to get it lined up. I'd rather that happen and just re-tack it myself. I mean we've all got our own preferences but this is how I do it. So what I'm doing is I'm just uh, tapping the panel up just to get it dead flush before I can put the next tack in. Of course every tack you put in moves the panel slightly so you've just got to make uh, minor adjustments all the way through. Just keep on tweaking things to keep things flush. As I said the heat keeps moving things around and I kind of end up 
in a position where I've probably got attack every 30 to 20 millimeters depending on the movement I get in between the two sections that I'm welding together. So going back to getting it fitting flush, uh, the type of welding repair I'm doing here, I'm using uh, butt fusion uh, with oxygen acetylene, utilizing uh, no gap whatsoever, uh, utilizing the um, new panel and the existing panel as the actual substance of the weld. I'm not uh, I'm not wanting to introduce any filler rod into this. Um, I'm just actually using the material that's there. So as the torch is heating up, uh, heating up the steel, then the steel expands and pushes the two pieces together. And as they come together, um, obviously it's it melts and fuses together. Uh, there's a few different reasons um, as to why you'd want to do this kind of thing um, one of them being that you don't have to put additional energy in to melt a filler rod and if you get it right it works very very well so I'm just doing a little bit of planishing I mean I think we're just at the tacking stage still so I've got all my tacks in position like I say it's probably tacked about every 20 to 30 mil and then what I do then is I'll um, exactly the same procedure again uh, hold the torch at a slight angle and I will push the flame along the joint uh, using small circular motions uh, I can see the weld pull through the goggles and uh, it just helps blend and spread the weld by doing this and I normally go um, from tack to tack I'll weld over the top of the tack that's already there so like I said before if you get a tack that pops or something it's no big deal because you can just simply weld it back over I just weld back over the tack anyway So I've done a I've done a short weld there, like I said, 20, 30 mil long, and I planish in as I go. So I'll do a small run of weld, and then I'll I'll planish the area back out to get it flat again, uh, to expand the weld back out. Uh, I may do two or three runs, uh, depending on how well it's going. If it all seems nice and stable, then I don't keep stopping all the way along. If I can get sort of three or four welds in without planishing, this speeds the process up a little bit. So as you can see, I'm just heating the area there uh, using tight circular motions, creating a weld pool. The two pieces are fusing together nicely, using no filler rod whatsoever not introducing any other elements into that panel so that the flame can be kept at a, a reasonably low temperature. With this method you tend to get a small dip where the weld is. Um, this is because you're not using additional filler rod and also gravity pulls it down slightly so you probably get a bit more of a build up underneath the weld than you will on the top if you weld on the vertical then it normally welds and you get no dip whatsoever there of course when you planish it out it goes flatter as well but you will always get that little that little dip where the weld was using this process the beauty of this process is you haven't got any bead to file down or get rid of. You basically planish it up and you're finished. So I'm just doing some final planishing here just to get the panel back to the correct profile.
just filing it over to highlight any low spots. As I've said in previous videos, body file isn't really to file the weld down, it's to highlight a low spot. So please don't think that I'm filing uh, material off the panel. I'm actually using it to highlight the low spots and then I'm using a bumping file to bring it back up again. All fairly self-explanatory this. Bracket back on in the correct place. Lovely curve back there now, better than it was before it was repaired. There's the curve I was talking about. That was something I particularly wanted to get right on this job. It's always nice to send stuff out better than it was when it was repaired before. Trial fit on the car now. Can't stress enough how important fitting stuff up is. Make sure that it all fits before you put the paint on. And there it is, with its wing bead back in, fitting lovely, far better than it did before, with that horrible, rusted piece of metal gone. I'm sure you must have got something out of that, I'm sure some little spark in your mind went off, oh I could use that on something else, and that's the point of these videos, all these skills are cross transferable, and this is the wonderful thing about car body repair where you've got a sheet of steel sat at work sheet of 20 gauge steel i just made some ferrari windscreen pillars repaired a porsche 911 court panel made some citroen ds repair panels all out of the same sheet all using the same skills utilizing the same tools and this is the wonderful thing about car body repair and of course the wonderful thing about tigger is that tigger's a wonderful thing so the youtube channel urchfab I'm sure that many of you are already aware of that channel, but for those that aren't, it's a YouTube channel uh, run by Matt Urch. He also runs his own business called Urchfab, Welding and Fabrications. So why did I start watching his videos? Well, I started watching his videos about nine months ago. He was doing a review on a Synergistic MIG welder, and I thought it was very good. The guy is very honest, very genuine, very entertaining. The theme of Matt's YouTube channel is competition race track and drift car building encompassing roll cage fabrication, bodywork fabrication and modification, suspension fabrication and modification. He also fits unusual engines in unusual cars. He also fabricates his own tools and there's always plenty of dry humour thrown in for good measure. His latest project is an MX-5 100E Fusion where he's dropped the 100E body shell on top of the MX-5 floor pan and running gear and what a fantastic build. What a fantastic chap, very entertaining, very honest and very genuine and uh, this is why I really like his channel, um, this is why I'm plugging him. He's also trying to make a go of it in the YouTube world, trying to get his channel up and running so that it gives him some kind of income which makes complete sense to me, something I'd like to have done myself. Um, and, and I plan to, uh, it would be great to get some sort of income back off it so that you could then reinvest that money into kit and make better uh, videos which is exactly what he's trying to have a go at. So fair play to you Matt, go and check him out. I'm not going to go on about him anymore because just, just go and check his channel out and go and see what he's up to. Uh, another guy I'm really, uh, I'm really impressed by Meet Ross, this is Ross, YouTube channel, Volkswagen, Restorations. Ross is doing a massive restoration on his Volkswagen bus. He's also doing a pretty big restoration on his Volkswagen bug as well. 
He makes a lot of his own repair panels whilst also fitting a lot of pre-made stuff and if you're a newbie to this trade then you are going to learn a heck of a lot from Ross. Go and check him out. A quick shout out to Simon Ayton. Simon it's great to see you putting all those skills into practice. You're doing a fantastic restoration on that Mini and thank you very much for all your great emails. Also a quick shout out to Carl Grenfell. Carl keep your chin up mate. And I hope you're enjoying this video. I hope it's giving you some laughs. Another guy you really need to check out is a guy called Mark Bennett Bold Creations. That's what his YouTube channel's called. He's a fiberglass expert. But even if you're not interested in fiberglass, this guy is seriously clever. He uh, takes things like he's uh, just got this MX5 hardtop. Uh, they've had a roll cage fitted. Hardtop doesn't fit. Taken the original hardtop, cut it all up, enlarged it, uh, made it so that it's the right you know, shape, then he's taken another mould off that to re recreate another brand new hardtop that goes over the top, so it fits over the top of the hardtop. Um, his techniques and experience is unbelievable, and I'm sure that if you watched his videos, they would inspire you to do other things, not just fiberglass. Uh, he took a piece of glass not long ago, and um, he took a glass and moulded a piece of uh, carbon fibre layers, uh, so it's like a, a carbon fi uh, fibre uh, look-alike thing then let's say uh, and he showed you all how he did it how he created a vacuum in there to suck the fiberglass resin through the carbon fiber sheet and it come out and it's absolutely brilliant and he makes all these things with drift cars and stuff like that and um, I'm sure that if you watched him uh, he would spark something off I mean this is why I watch these videos I watch these videos because I think a, I've sort of already had the idea, and B, I don't know what I'm doing, and these people just show you the way to do it, so, and it's just creativity, and you keep watching these videos, and you keep having ideas that you've never had before, or solutions to problems that you've never actually found the solution for. So go and check him out, Mark Bennett, Bold Creations. A little tip of the hat to Dave Jaguar 66, Dave Jaguar, thanks very much for your very kind offer. Unfortunately, I couldn't go along. I was just too busy. But man, that, that guy is really good. He does uh, a fantastic YouTube channel himself. And he's one of these people that he's uh, very devoted to YouTube. Um, and again. not a week goes by, he's not putting another video on. Um, which is what I get nagged at a lot because I'm not producing enough content and I'd like to, I really would. But uh, Dave, thanks very much for your videos. I know people appreciate them and I, you know, people should go and watch his video as well. I've got so many people I could plug, especially in the mini world. I mean, there's, there's Kev, gentlemen's most motor racing team. There's Piper Doug, Piper Doug also doing a, a fusion. Get me exciting. I like this ship. Jigga, 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 jigga. What do you guys think of that? <laughs> wiggle room. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Hopefully he'll be doing some more videos on that again soon with his um, with his Toyota Mini Pickup Fusion, uh, Mini Mini Mansha, there's Paul P, Sean, who I haven't oh, seen for a little while, so uh, Mini Tom. Uh, oh, there's loads, there's, there's, there's loads of people. What I'll try and do is I'll try and think of all the people that I like watching, put a list up, and I'll, I'll, I'll tag them all in the video description. Unfortunately, I just don't have the time to watch all the videos. I mean, I haven't seen any videos for the last two weeks because I've just been so busy with stuff. And I hope to catch up on all your guys' wonderful videos. Anyway, I'm off. I'm going to go and work on, uh, on my van now. I've got my van to crack on with. And I'm also going to work with making some more videos. And I'll be uploading some more very shortly, hopefully. So, bye for now. Take care. Bye for now. Be good to each other. Bye.